say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel. And I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. First comment comes from member Jens. Thank you for your membership. And they say, many thanks for the insights in your library. For me, as a non-native, harder to get this stuff. Jen's non-native what? Do you mean non-native of the country that you are currently in? Or do you mean non... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by non-native. Harder to get this stuff, not the papers, but the ideas out of those. What you are focused on when you are reading fiction laws, please. So I think Jens is asking me, in the, in the correct way, in plain English, to word that would, would be something like, uh, Jason, what do you focus on when you read the fiction laws? Question mark. And the answer to that is, the first thing I focus on is, what, if anything, can I use for my own construct out of these fiction, babble, laws, rules, codes, regulations, statutes, whatever? Is there anything useful that I can translate into correct sentence structure and use in my own construct? Other than that, just reading those things, it's always good to have, you know, knowledge cultivation of what the fiction is doing or not doing. I don't go out of my way to do that, especially with stuff I'm not interested in because it the way I use quantum grammar, fiction laws have no bearing on it. It's based on three principles. The principles of maintenance of rule one, rule equal, position of peace, neutrality, and the balance of the honor and the grace. When you have those principles, it doesn't really matter what the laws, rules, codes, regulations are. Because those are pretty self-exclamatory uh, principles. So I've never, never really needed to use those things. However, I have used certain things on envelopes just for sake of appearances or just for sake of, depending upon whom I was contracting with or communicating with, to have a desired effect upon them to stop a trespass. So that's what I focus on. First is I focus, is there anything useful or valuable to me for my own construct? And second, just for general education of what the fiction system gets up to. Next comment comes from David hyphen Stephen Morris. And they say, pretty sure the live life claims are only done by the Russell J. Gould now. And I think my kuleana to David was, if you believe that, 
I have some oceanfront property to sell you in Idaho. Because from time immemorial, from the beginning of when Colin David Eiffel Wynn Colin Miller founded and originated Quantum Grammar, live life claims come from the live life claimant. That is if you want to take authority over yourself. If you want to be subservient and submit to someone like Russell J. Gould, that's up to you. You can go ahead and pay your 200 bucks or whatever it is and get your live life claim from him. And then uh, you would see his name in the copyright copy claim section and you would give your live life to him. That's entirely up to you. Your choice, David. I, however, from the summer of 2017 on, have chosen to be autonomous. I create my own, my own claim of the live life. I've used it with 100% success in and out of all manner of foreign vessels and dry dock. All manner of traveling, navigation, and also the successful students that I have taught, they also use it to great success and they are the authority of their constructs. Unlike the people that buy live life claims with uh, RJG's name in the copyright copy claims section, which perhaps you're one of them. I guess, you know, you're either your own leader or you're a follower, your choice. Next set of comments comes from Daniel A. Ortiz, and they say, I have a question. How to do WTH, does that mean what the hell? How to do what the hell children if claim comes from one self? Okay. I'd have to guess that English is not their first language, so I'm thinking they mean... How to do a live life claim with children if authority comes from yourself. My kuleona to that was who, you know, who's in charge? Who takes charge? Who is a steward of children? The parent or guardian. Because children are not old enough to make choices for themselves. So who takes jurisdiction over them? Well, if you're in the fiction court system, if you're in the birth certificate system, the state does. But hypothetically, it's the parent or the guardian. Live life claim works along those same mechanics. Because a child cannot make a claim for oneself, they're not old enough to, right? The parents do that. So the th same thing would work for the live life claim. Such as years ago when I made live life claims uh, for the children that I'm a steward of, I took jurisdiction over those. I autographed the stamps. I was postmaster, bank banker of those document contract postal vessel court venues. I was the authority because I'm the parent, I'm the father. They, of course, autograph their own autograph in the live life claim section, but I'm the one that took jurisdiction over the stance because, number one, they're not old enough to. Number two, I'm the guardian. And number three, I have the correct sentence structure knowledge. So that's the answer to that question. And then the next question is, or the next comment is, a little complicated for beginners. I'm going to see this video more times. Thanks. And, you know, something that's complicated for beginners, perhaps Daniel considers himself to be a beginner, and so therefore it's complicated for him. But not all beginners think it's complicated. Complicated is an opinion. For some people, it may be too simple. It just depends who you are, whether you're a beginner or not. It's an opinion. It's a state of mind. Next comment comes from user BL4DC6YF4Y, whoever that is, and they say, number one, for the Jason Matthew of the glass. For the is not underlined, of the glass is not underlined. Two, 
colon Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass. It's not clear if either the colon or the period of Jason or to glass, respectively, is underlined or not underlined. Now, the first thing that uh, I communicated to this individual, again, whomever they are, it's a, probably a good idea to spell a name with correctness if you want to be taken seriously. And in both instances, when they put Jason Matthew of the glass, they spell my name wrong. It's incorrect. And it took them like three tries to get it correct. And so that's part of my vetting process. If you do not possess the capacity to go over your own work, check it, and make sure you cross all your T's and dot all your I's, well, then you're going to have a lot of trouble with cognizing correct sentence structure because it is a laser-like focus that is critical to success with the grammar. And this individual is addressing me, a guest aboard my vessel on my channel, and then they spell my name wrong twice in the same comment. Wow. Okay, so let's get to the meat of the matter, which, by the way, I did give Cooley on to this because I asked them to please, you know, get my name right, and then I'll answer your question. Even though I have given closure to this in multiple videos, in my correct sentence structure playlist. If they would just take the time to study and uh, what do they call it? Instead of jumping the shark. But as a man of my word, they did after three tries get my name correct. And so I answered them. So you can check that out in the comments field if you so choose. So let's go through the rest of the comment. Why the mechanics would the colon or period be underlined here but not in item one above if this be the case? It depends upon the grammatical scenario, all right? A period is a full stop. With correct sentence structure, one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency, so on down the line. So a period is used as a full stop. The bottom line which this is the video that they're commenting on. If they watch the video, they would know this if they pay attention to it, maybe watch it a few times and let it permeate their psyche. The bottom line is used to highlight something that is meant to be taken as a whole. So if you have a period, like say, for example, in an abbreviation or a colon in a name, and you underline that, it does not function as the full stop of the sentence in the period sense, and it does not affect the concatenation of the positional sequencing in that sense if it's underlined because it's part of a whole. If it's not underlined, then a colon represents a position lodial phrase. If the period is not underlined, then it represents the full stop at the end of that thought or that sentence. If the period is underlined in an abbreviation, it signifies the full stop to the letter of the word that that letter represents in the abbreviation. It's very simple. What are the mechanics of the period in this title? Okay, I just shared what the mechanics of the period is. Are. <laughs> what the mechanics of the period are. Mechanics is plural. Are would be plural in plain fiction English. Why is there a lack of consistency in the underlined writing of words and symbols? Uh, there isn't. There's just perhaps a lack of knowledge on your part, which could be solved or addressed if you were to actually get serious about the grammar and contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for workshops. And you would get full closure on all this stuff on a curriculum-based consistency. But that's up to you. Other than that, the answer to any grammar question is available right here on this YouTube channel for free. Sometimes in the comments field, if I feel magnanimous and I don't mind spoon feeding a little bit. But for the most part, I prefer that you, the viewer, do your own work in the almost 900 videos on this channel. You have a grammar question, the answer is here on this channel. I've already put the work in. I've already published all these videos, thousands of hours of work. It's up to you to value that by studying it yourself 
and getting your own answers because I'll tell you, it, it's worth a lot more if you come to the conclusion yourself. If you are able to hunt down and get a closure for yourself rather than have me just hand it to you, it's a lot easier. Now juxtapose that against the workshops. If you take the workshops, you will learn it much, much, much faster for sure. Because I'm your personal guide, basically taking you by the hand and tailoring the class to you in your speed. But again, you know, not too many people do that. Only the most serious students do that. In a dictionary, would it not make sense to clarify whether the colon and period are underlined or not? Well, yes, a dictionary would give closure to every mechanic word or hieroglyph that you use. That's what a dictionary does. There appears to be no period after glass in glass by the writ. Yes, that is correct. Because why would you end the sentence in the middle of a sentence after the word glass? What's the point of that? If the period in items one or two serves a mechanical function to the name title, why not here? I just told you. Please provide closure. I did. Peace and love, brother. Oh, that's the other thing that uh, I addressed. There's only a handful of people that I gift the title of brother to in my life. And those are people that I know by their correct name. And I have trust counts with them and we're friends. This individual, I have no idea who they are. No clue. And they, even after some prodding, they don't offer a correct name. So that tells me that's, again, part of the vetting process. They don't want to take jurisdiction over their words. They don't want to step up onto the carpet into the light and show who they are. I mean, they know my correct name. I just ask the same consideration of them, which they obviously don't want to do for whatever reason. So I think the word brother here is a misnomer, and they actually told me they meant it in an esoteric sense. So what does esoteric mean? What does brother mean in an esoteric sense? Esoteric means secret, intended to be communicated only to the initiated. Profound, belonging to an inner circle, more within. From Proto-Indo-European ENS hyphen O hyphen, Suffix form of ENS, extended form of root EN in. Hmm. So user hyphen BL4DC6YF4Y considers themselves to be my secret brother. <laughs> because supposedly we share some profound knowledge. Nah, that doesn't make sense. So Again, part of the vetting process, it leads me to guess that user whatever, blah, 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 doesn't really even know what esoteric means. So it is what it is. Appreciate the comment. Appreciate uh, what you brought to the table here. And again, any grammar question you have can be answered if you just take the time and invest the effort in studying on this channel. Or bite the bullet and contact me to apply for a workshop. Oh, and here we have the Kuliana to the, what I was just talking about. They said, thank you for the closure on your name, Matthew. Now, keep in mind, they misspelled my name several times, multiple times actually. And now they're not even calling me by my first name. You may hear me in videos say my correct name is Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason, but this individual chooses to call me Matthew, which is not my correct first name. So why they choose to misspell my name and not even call me by the name that I'm asking or telling people that they can call me by is a mystery. I use the term brother in an esoteric sense, not in a religious sense. I meant neither trespassing nor disrespect. Well, I didn't take it as trespassing or disrespect. I just wondered why you did that and you provide closure. You meant it in hidden sense, I guess. 
As to who I am exactly, I don't know. I could give you the title, name, my experiences, but that really wouldn't answer the question as you ask it. Well, the way I ask it is in a plain, simple English sense. You know my correct name. I just asked you for yours. And you just said uh, I could give you a title name, but you didn't, did you? You chose not to. So that's also very telling. I assure you that I will provide name and address before, during, or after payment of services. And what services would those be? I'm curious. That's, that's really interesting to me because as far as my services, there are no charges or fees for what I do. I navigate on donation give basis only. So they certainly can't be talking about me, So which led me to guess that maybe they're talking about the service of providing their correct name, in which case I politely refuse. Next comment comes from Galaxy13 User, another individual who, when asked to, chooses not to credential themselves and chooses not to to take jurisdiction over their words. Thank you for your viewership nonetheless. And they say, for the stupidity of the Americans are with the remote control of the television with the sensation of the lie by this claim. Syntax key 567, position lodial fact. Enjoy. Five six seven five six seven R five six. Oh my goodness. All right. Very, very uh, confusing. I don't see any five sixes or sevens in that sentence at all. Number one, because the verb is incorrect. Stupidity is singular. Therefore, the verb would be singular is. The positional concatenation is incorrect because of the lie by this claim is not correct positional sequencing. You would never precede a by the with a for the. It's cause, concern, verb. Possessive concern, possessive authority. For the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. Very, very, very simple. And on top of that, we have particles of negation in the vowel in front of a consonant in Americans. Remote, R-E, control, contra, that means no as well. So this is not correct sentence structure, and I did provide a syntax. I did syntax the sentence, and then they did correspond back and say that they would work on it. And again, you know, if you're serious about it, if you really want to step up to the plate, Contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. Because definitely the place to learn correct sentence structure is certainly not in a comments field on a social media platform. Although you can learn it from the thousands of hours of videos I have here on this channel, which I've provided for free. Completely up to you. Now the most important thing about this and the most grievous mistake that I see, because volition is the most important thing. From the conveyance of the sentence, Galaxy 13 user is making a claim for Americans, whatever Americans are, they're making a claim for them, saying they're stupid. They're calling Americans stupid, making a claim of an intelligence level for a whole group population of people. Did those Americans give Galaxy 13 user permission to make that claim for them? I highly doubt it. So therefore, Galaxy 13 user has theoretically perpetrated a grievous trespass upon that particular group of people by calling them stupid. So I guess that must mean that Galaxy 13 user perhaps thinks that they themselves are on a higher level intelligence than Americans. I don't know. It's implied. Anyways, that was fun. Thanks for the comment. Final comment comes from Don L. Jackson, and they say, I always thought PSYOPs were 
in play with these guys, especially how DWM passed away after three days with the clown from the projects across the pond. Thanks, Jason. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Now, I'm trying to digest this comment here. Especially how DWM passed away. How did he pass away? As far as I know, it was heart failure. He did spend three days with Mark Lowercase K. Christopher, but he did not pass away like immediately after Mark left. He didn't pass away immediately after Mark left. It was a while. There's some time went by. And in the year preceding that, David had health issues. He was in and out of the hospital. I know people that, that knew him personally. And uh, a lot of his lifestyle choices were not very healthy during that period of time. So I'm not sure what you're inferring there, Donnell. As far as David Wynn Miller passing away. Now, as far as the video you're commenting on, Yes, I mean, take Freemasonry, which David Wynn Miller claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason. Freemasonry plus military psychological operations, which is addressed in this video that you're commenting on with Sergeant Robert Horton, equals what? What do you get out of that when you add those two things together? Reminds me of a song by Genesis land of confusion. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.